All right, so we're going to talk about DHCP and DNS and how it works. So as an example, I've got a little packet tracer file here I put together with a network. So let me get that fixed up. So here's a packet tracer demonstrating of basically two networks. We have basically on the green side, we have three switches. We have one pretend to be the core. One is actually acting like where all the servers are at. And we're just gonna presume this is all the HR or a group of machines in one spot. And then here, we're just gonna pretend this is the internet and there are just four random web servers out there. So, and then we're gonna just simulate one router. So we're gonna configure the router too. So we're gonna go into three, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase one, green, phase two, blue, and then the router. So that's the order and how we're gonna cover everything. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is, you know, make a little chart like something like this, a little grid that's gonna have your static IP addresses. What's gonna be DHCP, what's your mask, what is your DNS, what's your default gateway? Are we gonna have a, a record for it or not? So, as an example, so we know here in the green, we're talking about 172.16.0.0 with a slash 16. So we know that is a class B address. And here we have 172.15.15.0 slash 24. So this is also a class B, but it's a pro it is a public address. But it's been subnetted down to a class C where the one in the green is a class C private. So we're not doing any subnetting in this example here. It's just kind of more about like taking these out, you know, taking this block of IP and coming up with a range of IPs and how we're going to assign these things and give these out. So let's go ahead and start with our mask on our sheet because that's going to be the easiest thing because since we're not modifying it, all right, so we're just going to take that and we're going to duplicate that. And then here we're going to go to 55.255.255.0. And then we're going to duplicate that. All right, so that makes that easy. So, and then the next step is to come up with which address we're going to do DCP, which ones we're going to do static. So we're going to go with, these are going to be DHCP. So there we go, nice and easy. And then these are going to be uh, static. Oh, and I'm also missing one more machine. So let me, insert and we gotta have DHCP server. Okay. So again, and then we're gonna have yes. So the next step is to come up with an IP address for the router, our gateway. So for the green, so typically you're going to use the beginning or the end of the range. It just makes sense. All right. So I'm going to say we're going to go with the beginning. So we're going to do 172.16.0.1, which would be the beginning. And let's move this out just a smidge. And then we're going to go with that same premise. Then we're going to go with 172.15.1. Is the premise there? All right. So typically, our internet servers are going to be static. So let's just go ahead and then just give it addresses. Two one seven two dot fifteen dot fifteen dot three one seven two dot fifteen dot. 
four and fifteen dot fifteen dot five. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so we got that kind of going. So and if we're looking at this one, so we could easily and then we're gonna have to set DCP for this guy here for these guys. So we'll set that all up uh, in a moment. So let's go ahead and give it a dress range. So we're gonna do 172.16. And we could just literally do we can do you know uh again dot zero and then we can skip to 10 and go with 172.16.0.11 and then do 172.16.0.20 now you're probably wondering why did it did not go consecutively in order like i did with the other one it doesn't necessarily matter if you're in an organization building out your network you may want to leave some spaces between addresses so later down the line when your network grows and you need a third DNS server, well, now you're not using some DNS number that's not sequential. So you can have, if you if you have plenty of space, you should leave sequential spaces for like devices. So this way, if later down the line, we wanted another two DNS servers, they could be dot, you know, 12.13 instead of being, you know, 172.2.6 you know, or something because, you know, it's so far down the address scheme. So it's a nice way of just kind of uniforming things. All right. So let's go ahead and tackle this now that we have our information. So we're going to hop on to DNS1. And here I'm just going to move this over just so I can see. We're going to go to desktop, IP configurations. By default, all PCs are static. Then we're going to put in 172. Dot sixteen dot zero dot ten and again our default mask our default gateway is gonna be one seven two dot sixteen dot zero dot one and oh I see I made a mistake here so let me fix that and then we're gonna since this is the DNS server we're gonna point to ourselves there we go so in packet trace, in the real world, you would have multiple DNS servers in packet tracer. You can only have one. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the next machine. And we're going to go here. And we're going to do 172.16.0.11. Again with the default mask in 172.16.0.1. So for DNS here, we can either point to ourselves or point to dot 10 because they're both DNS servers. So it's just mere your preference. You know, having it check itself or check its neighbor. So I'm just gonna go with check itself. Just sounds better. All right. So at this point, I still haven't created any records, so don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get back to it in a second. I'm just getting all the stuff IP real quick. And then we'll hit. Then we'll hit configurations in a moment. All right. So we're gonna hit again desktop IP and. We're going to put in 172.16.0.20. And again, we're still using the same IP address for the default gateway because they're all using the same device. Now here I can choose which one of these DNS. There's no necessary right or wrong answer, just which one is configured. Okay, so there we go. So we still have to do some other configurations now. We gotta set up the DHCP. So let's go ahead and set up the DHCP. We're gonna go here under services and go to DHCP. 
So by default, you have to leave, you have to have one pull called server pull. So we're going to leave that. Here it's going to give us a bunch of numbers that we have to fill in. So here again, this is why we make that chart. So you know what our default gateway is going to be. And our DNS, we'll just make that. Uh, again, you can only do one. So I'm going to pick 11. And then from here, we can start from one. Because there's no sense of, uh, I mean, we have, you know, we're class B, we have 60 some thousand IP addresses. So we can easily just say, hey, let's, you know, leave the first, you know, the first, you know, the block, the first one, the first block. We can just leave it free for servers for growth so that we're not mixing matching PCs in it. I guess this is not an ideal situation of, of it, but this is just kind of learning the concepts of taking like your home network and applying it to individual devices and moving up. All right. So we're going to hit save. We're going to hit on. So remember to hit on. And let's go here. Turn desktop. We go to DHCP. And we can see it's got some addresses. So let's go ahead and see how everything works. So we can ping 172.16 oh i guess i'm not i guess it helps to be clicked on something well uh, we can't ping the default gateway because we haven't configured that so we'll go with the dns there we go so we got our dns one to the soft barrel ping we got two And we got our DHCP. All right, so that's good. So we can see all those. All right, I like that. So let's go ahead and jump back onto the DNS server. So one more thing I want to point out here with the DHCP. So we could have multiple pulls. So if we create some new set of numbers here, we could click add, and then you'd have two pulls. So you'd have one pull for your network. And then if we wanted one to be for the blue, we could create a new one for the blue, and that would be a two. All right. So let's go ahead and come up with some DNS names. So here we go. Nice and easy. I'm not going to come up with anything fancy. Just there we go for that purpose. So we're going to go to the DNS server. We're going to go to services. We're going to go to DNS. We're going to turn it on, and we're going to say DNS1. We're going to leave it as an A record. So we're going to do 168.0.10. We're going to click add. And then we're going to say DNS2. That's going to be 172.16 or yeah, .0.11. And then DHCP, we're going to make that record just in case. And then we're going to go let me back up and put 20 in. Let's, let's go ahead and grab these. DNS www one one seven two dot fifteen dot fifteen W. 
All right, so now we have all our DNS records set up. So like an example in class, we didn't do all that up front. Just doing it now, just makes life easier. So when you're watching the video, you can't have one place to do it all. All right, so we're gonna go to our first machine, which is WW3. It doesn't matter which order we do it in, just as long as we pay attention to the IP addresses that we're giving it. So there we go. And it's going to be four. And remember, we have to add another mask because this is a 255.255. Okay. One. And then we're going to use our DNS server three, our DNS server one. So that's 172.16.0.10. Oh, that reminds me, we'd have to, we have to go back and do all the other ones too. <laughs> Or do do all the records twice for DNS too because they don't have any. All right, so no big deal for now. So let's go ahead and get full wire. Dot five. Here we go. Got to fix the mask. Seven two dot sixteen dot zero dot ten. So I'm just proving the point here that you can use your DNS server, you know, through a router. Yes, in the real in the real world you wouldn't be using an internal DNS you'd have wouldn't your DMZ. But I'm just trying to prove a point that you can you know, if you can route to it, you can access it. In the later demonstrations, it'll be like that. And then our last one. So that's so now everybody should be getting an IP address. If, let's check it out and see. Oh yeah, we did. No, now we get to configure the router. All right. So under CLI, here's how we get into the router. We're going to type in enter. Sometimes it may ask us if we want to do a config. We're just going to say no, and then hit enter. We're going to type in enable. So if you type in enough letters to distinguish one command to another, that's all you need to do. So I just typed in EN and then I hit tab just so you can see the whole command. So like we're going to do config T, which is configuration mode. And then from there, we're going to go to interface uh, G0 slash slash one. And then we're going to just type in enter. So, oh, I already in the interface. Oh, I spaced out. Okay, so we're going to do, um, so we're going to do no shut. Now you can see here, it's going through the learning phase. Excellent. It's also showing us that the interface is now back up. So then the next thing we're going to do is IP address. And then we're going to slide this over so I can see what our so it's this address here. Well, we're going to do 172.16.0.1 with a 255.255.0.0 IP address. There we go. So now we can do 
interface g zero slash two in up arrow do no shut again if I move this over we can see now that interface is up excellent and now we're gonna hit enter and now we're gonna go to the IP address and type in the correct one and hit it in. Now, let's go to the chart and let's try some quick pings and see what happens. So, so we're going to say ping 172.16.0.1. So we're going to we're using the ping command if I can spell ping correctly. So we're pinging the interface of the router on our subnet or in the green subnet. So now we're going to try the other side of the interface just to see if it works. And it works. Excellent. So we are now pinging from here through this switch, through this switch, through this router's interface out to this guy's interface. So we're now touching the blue. So now, so now we can type in ping 172.15.15.2 and see if that works. All right. So sometimes packet tracer drops the first packet, but if you get three, well, we up we're going to get all four this time. That's just the way Packet Tracer works sometimes. So, awesome sauce. So, let's try this and see if this will work. So, I'm pinging by name. So, if I got this machine pointed to the right DNS server, then this should work. We'll see in a moment. Let's see if I did everything correctly. It's thinking for a long time. Now let's at least ping that address and see that it does work. Jump out of this real quick and ah, that's why I didn't find it because I'm using DNS 11. So if we go to DNS, see, we have no records in here yet. So if we fire this guy up and we type in www. Three and dot four to it. Now we go back. I right, because I want to pick a different number that I haven't pinged yet. Just that's the reason I just did that one for now. And then there we go. You can see the DNS is resolving. So it looks like the machine was just waiting for the DNS or the timeout. So that's why it was taking a while for that to work. So there you go. You can see a couple different things. So a little bit of troubleshooting there too. See, not bad, huh? All right. And then if we went and did the same side, I mean, no matter what, all the sides should be able to ping. So like an example. Ping. DNS one because I believe I gave this guy the right the right you know the right DNS number. Okay, I think maybe I 
fifty. Sure, I gave it the right address. Ten. Shrine. Beautiful gateway. Okay, let's get them over. Let's get across the router. The DNS turn is having an issue. Oh, I don't have. Oh, I put it in 10. That's right. There is no 10. I put the wrong number in. Oh, and now I forgot to put ping in. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So nice job. If you got everything pinging across, Great job. If not, again, come visit me in my office hours and see what we can do. All right. Catch you later. Bye.